I didn't know you could sue the president of the United States. Well, we're in really uncharted territory here. Uh, that's absolutely true. This has never happened. The um, you know this isn't you know you know uh, Congress telling Andrew Jackson that he can't accept a gold medal from Simon Bolivar, right? This is a very different situation, and so this is unprecedented. And um, this case brings a lot more weight uh, to the other uh, lawsuits that have already been filed. By and so is this. Is this the lawsuit that crew? Filed? So that's different. So okay. there's a couple things. Crew back in January, as soon as Trump was inaugurated, filed their lawsuit against Trump, saying he violated the, yeah. the this foreign bribery clause. Uh, and then they've added other uh, plaintiffs to that case, uh, a bar owner um, in Washington, and there yeah. are a few others. Uh, but this is the first time a, a state government has taken action to sue the president over these issues. And some of the experts think that they have a their standing is is stronger. Uh, the Frosch and Racine basically made the case that because people are uh, gravitating to Trump's hotel, foreign governments, lobbyists, trade associations, they're actually taking away businesses business from the Washington and Maryland state-owned operations, like the the convention center in downtown, yeah, um, or right. state-owned convention centers and conference centers in Maryland. So they're facing real injury from the president. Uh, uh, profiting off his presidency. Right. Um, so this is probably headed to the Supreme Court eventually. One would yeah, think, we'll right? see. The, the The real question is whether this gets into court at all or whether it'll be dismissed out of hand. Um, and the question, and that's what we don't know will happen because it is so unprecedented. Uh, last week, uh, the Department of Justice responded to Cruz's initial suit uh, saying that it should be dismissed and that basically the president can accept can take uh, foreign payments from as many people as he wants and as many amounts as he wants, and he hasn't violated the Constitution. Well, yeah, what my reading of that Department of Justice um, response was that when the Founding Fathers were talking about the emoluments, call, yeah. wrote the emoluments clause into the Constitution, they were talking about like a foreign government or foreign leader giving uh, an American leader money in his pocket, right? Not business transactions, like yeah. making money from... This was the DOJ, yeah. I think, yeah. version that, well, it's different if he's offering uh, like a product, you know, a hotel room or meeting right. rooms right. or something like that. That's a business transaction. That's not what the founding fathers had in mind. I think that's know? I think that's a real tortured read of our too, history but, and of yeah. the founding fathers. Uh, their founding intent. I mean, we literally fought a war about foreign influence, right? We broke the yoke of a foreign like tyranny, and for the them to say the founders didn't mean that. Donald Trump is the example. He's the the one that our founders feared when they wrote that thing. And there's this sort of thing. Oh well, George Washington had a farm, or you know, Thomas Jefferson was in debt to foreign creditors. They wouldn't have done something that was against them. It's like hypocrisy also isn't new in politics, but the the framers clearly had this in mind. And Donald Trump was who they worried about. And um, uh, it's going to be really interesting to get this through the courts. And also the thing that will be really interesting is the discovery phase. So if we get past if the court, if these lawsuits aren't oh, dismissed wow. yeah. and we get to discovery, that means Donald Trump's tax returns. And I think. Yeah, that, bitch. Let's yeah, see him. Exactly. Let's get him out. I exactly. want to see those. <laughs> and, that I'm waiting for. And that, e even if the case is dismissed, which I don't think it should be dismissed and I think it should go to trial, that would be a big win for these if we do finally get to see his tax returns because that is a, a key point of all of this. We know that Donald Trump is already profiting from foreign governments. The, the uh, Saudi, the Saudi Arabia's lobbyists spent $270,000 in the last quarter at Trump's hotel as they were lobbying on a bill to um, uh, lobby against a bill that would allow uh, victims of 9-11 to sue governments like Saudi Arabia. And they spent $270,000. That's just what we know about. And the only reason we know about it is be, it was required to be disclosed with foreign uh, lobbyist filings. Yeah. So. They are, and the word is out among uh, emissaries that coming to Washington. Yeah. If you really want to curry favor with the administration, you have your events at the Trump International Hotel. You Absolutely. Bring, you you book rooms there, right? You have uh, everybody knows there. it. It's right. Uh, yeah. Every day you're seeing events. It's not, and it's not like the the foreign bribery is 
a big issue, but it's also trade associations are having events there. Um, yeah. Trump donors are, when they're coming to town, they're staying there. They know what this is. And uh, one of the big issues is that when Trump said, I'm going to leave my business, I'm going to isolate myself, I'm not going to have any reports, he was just lying. Uh, Eric Trump, who is my favorite Trump, um, has said that he's giving his dad quarterly reports on the business. Donald Trump knows how the business is doing. Sure he does. And he'll know if... Uh, new clients are coming in and he'll know uh, who has his back and uh, we know that he is friendly to people who are friendly to him and it just puts this cloud of corruption over the entire administration and uh, really uh, makes people wonder who he's working for.